when we talk about solving climate change or clean energy or sustainability or solving any real problem that humanity faces who do we think of do we think of someone like him or her i'm willing to bet that a vast majority of you would think of someone like her why is that so i am megha rawat ceo at demitas energies and a die hard believer and practitioner of sustainability in all walks of my life my husband calls me a sustainability ninja and my mom calls all this common sense unfortunately common sense is not very common these days and here i am today in front of you to tell you that no matter who you are wherever you're from and however old or educated you are you too can become a sustainability ninja like all good stories mine too starts from my childhood born into a typical indian middle class family i had a fairly typical childhood which obviously meant that my parents imbibed within me values practices and habits that were essentially common sense techniques to save money the more utility you derive out of an asset more economically lean your operations become in today's wasteful culture we call this sustainable practices like everyone else switching off lights and fans when not needed was not recommended but was mandatory ac would be turned on only for a few hours at night just before hitting the hay an entire car or bike would be washed clean with just a single bucket of water new shirt would often be a used one passed down from the elder sibling and when we outgrew the shirt too it was transformed into a dusting cloth and then a mop these practices were fairly common across indian households but my parents took them a little too far my parents come from the unforgiving but mesmerizingly beautiful foothills of himalayas where everything from electricity and water to warmth and oxygen were in short supply and then they ended up in the indian army because of which we lived in rajasthan for a long time where everything was again in short supply these life experiences help my parents understand and more importantly appreciate the limited nature of most resources available to human kind as well as the need to utilize them sustainably i did not inherit monetary fortune from my parents but this lesson would most certainly pass down to us and in hindsight it has been more valuable to me than a fortune could have ever been my mom would climb 400 feet of snowy hills at dawn to get firewoods for breakfast and then wade through knee deep snow for 6 kilometers to attend the only school in a 20 kilometer radius only to return home and finish their homework and house chores before evening sets in because there was no electricity to let them work after dusk and despite such lack of resources she got herself a masters degree hearing her stories about how they made the most of everything they had every single day was all the inspiration a 3 year old me needed not only for sustainable living but also for living i remember telling myself having to look out for leopards and bears before you take a midnight pee in sub zero weather was definitely more inconvenient than trying to solve a question in trigonometry fast forward a decade and i found myself graduating with a masters degree from a fancy engineering college and landing a fancy it job in a fancy it company in one of the fanciest it hubs in india my parents were as proud of me as i would have been after taking a successful midnight pee at my mom's frigid leopard and bear infested home i too was proud of myself i had cleared a major milestone of my life trajectory that was set 12 months before i was born but little did anyone know life had another trajectory planned for me all the trained as a software engineer from one of the premier colleges in india in an era when becoming a software engineer was seen as an escape from the clutches of middle class society and into a life filled with happiness and prosperity i simply was not satisfied soon after i joined an it company 
I learned that being proud of your achievements doesn't necessarily give you a sense of contentment or fulfillment. It took me six months of toiling in PHP to realize the happiest time of my days were the five minutes I had started spending in the washroom for each bathroom break I took. If I was not happy typing out codes that saved the world by letting people order food from the stores that were half a block away, then what was I even doing there? For days, I kept seeking an answer to this question, but in vain. And out of nowhere came a very well-timed divine sign. My friend was gifted a pair of very peculiar shoes. It was beautiful. But it wasn't one of those branded ones that people flaunt. And yet, he was flaunting them like they were designer shoes. This curiosity growing within me drowned the constant misery PHP had subjected me to. Those were upcycled shoes made of discarded tires. Wow. I did not know at that time, but my life journey on the path of sustainability had now begun. This term upcycle fascinated me like nothing else ever had. Not PHP, not trigonometry, not leopard or bears. I would avoid pee breaks that I had come to love so much and would spend hours researching sustainability, upcycling, fast fashion, emissions, climate change, recycling and the likes. On the fourth day since I laid my eyes on those shoes, I put down my papers. Goodbye, PHP. And good riddance. But there was a problem. I knew almost nothing about fashion or making shoes or even selling them. I did not even know anyone who knew anything about this. The admittedly good taste in buying shoes, not selling was ironically all thanks to my well-paying IT job. Nevertheless, I was determined to make this happen. I knew this is something I could fall in love with if I already wasn't. And so I did what any former programmer would do, make flowcharts, checklists and timelines and profusely Google everything I should know all day and all night. Step one, make exhaustive list of every company, every person, every organization doing absolutely anything in this industry. Step two, time to reopen science textbooks. I was told it is a language in which the universe talks. And boy, I had a lot of talking to do. Step three, revisit art. This was easy. I would make beautiful flowers out of discarded salt packets as a child. Surely I could do this. I would own best out of waste contest at school. I told myself, and now I would win this too. Step four, learn everything there is to know about doing business. Learn how many works, learn how to sell, why people buy. Step five, just do it. I had just begun and then there was another problem. Step six, find some money. Without my job, paying bills would soon become difficult let alone investing anything into a business that did not even have a name yet. One thing you learn in the Indian Army is to not give up. And I had to just do that. I built a spreadsheet and outwent all unnecessary expenses. I would have to now maximize utility out of whatever cash that was left in my bank to make operations lean and hopefully survive until break even. My middle class roots had thankfully prepared me for this. Soon after, Curio was born. Long story short, after what seemed like never-ending hardships, continuous learnings, and a whole lot of hard work, Curio was becoming something that made me more proud than my IT career could ever have made. Curio walked the ramp of Flagme Fashion Week, got covered in some of the biggest media and radio houses in the country, and had some of the biggest Bollywood legends as customers. But when I had started Curio, I wanted it to be so much more than just another upcycle or vegan brand in the fashion industry. Most people in sustainable fashion industry begin their journey with the intent to make this world a better, more beautiful place. But it unfortunately takes so much more than just good intent to save the world, especially when economics has something to say about it. 
as evolved from a newbie into an in industry insider, I realized that the socioeconomic aspect of these products and even the industry made little sense. My friend's upcycled shoes that pushed me into this rabbit hole had come at a price of 150 US dollar. All my shoes collectively had cost less than that. It didn't take long for me to realize if we were to save the world or at least make the fashion industry more sustainable, the current approach was unsustainable. Similar to Elon Musk's philosophy, we cannot expect any significant change in the industry by creating a few thousand upcycled footwear for a handful of wealthy customers, while vast majority of the industry built tens of millions of non-vegan but significantly inexpensive footwear for the masses. Solution to this conundrum eluded me, mostly due to multidisciplinary aspect of the problem. That is where my career's second inflection point was waiting for me. I met Vijay and saw what he was doing with Demitas Energies. And in instant, everything made sense again. While Curious tries to bring much needed change in the fashion industry, one person at a time, Demitas was weaponizing bleeding edge of engineering and sciences to revolutionize several industries and billions of people at a time. This made so much sense to me and this is what the world needed. Taking heed of what Sheryl Sandberg says about the seat in a rocket ship, I explored possibilities of how I can help Demitas in its mission. And this turned out to be a match made in heaven. Vijay and his team were die-hard engineers who were more keen about building a solution to our generation's greatest challenge than about building a company that could do this more effectively. I joined Demitas and brought in my expertise in building and running a company. Today, Demitas Energies is doing exactly what the younger me had actually wanted while I started Curate. Building real solutions that solve real problems. Although Curio continues to bring sustainable smiles to a lot of people, I am helping Demitas Energies build power plants that not only eliminates thousands of tons of emission from power plants in large industries, but also working to make our power grids cleaner and renewable power plants more profitable through its long duration energy storage technologies. While I have sold sustainable products to celebrities, it makes me even more happy to work on solutions with gigantic organizations in industries like oil and gas, energy, steel, chemical, and not just sustainable fashion. And to my delight, through Demitas, I am now bringing about the exact change I wanted to see in fashion industry by working with fashion giants to reduce their emission and increase their efficiencies. With all that I've shared with you, I hope I have given you enough inspiration and confidence to do your bit in saving the world, even if you think you're underqualified for this. Because if a software engineer from a small town in Rajasthan could take on the challenge of changing the fashion and energy industry, you too can do whatever it is that you want to do.